I'm Pastor Tim Holscher, and what you're about to see here is part three of a question on how do we solve this problem of the church uh, not being God first centered, but people centered, trying to attract and draw and get the attention, win people on that side. And uh, our brother Steve Thomas is in the middle of answering uh, this question by talking to us about teaching the word. That was in the last video. So this is kind of a repeat. The first part of this is a repeat from the last video. The end of this video, to let you know, the audio continues going, but we had a uh, problem that none of us noticed uh, what happened when we recorded it. And so the video is out, but all you're going to see is us talking, but you can still hear the audio. So trust that this is much of an encouragement to you as the conversation was with me. So um, I'm assuming most of the people probably watching this on this channel probably are familiar with this. It's been something I've been talking about for uh, over a hundred and some videos now on interpreting okay. or, read, or reading your how to read your Bible. It's the series I've been doing. But just in case they don't know, just kind of give me a picture. I mean, you illustrated a little bit by talking about, you know, teaching the Old Testament as though it's doctrine for practice, but just kind of flush that out a little sure. bit. Like, can you give me a, a really good example right out of Scripture of how something might be abused and how it should be taught properly? Well, I think um, one of the um, more common uses of this is they'll take a look at Solomon's Prayer uh, in Chronicles and the dedication of the temple. And that verse, it just, well, it just, you can feel the patriotism welling up in you and you can see the eagle flying and feel the breeze on your face. You know, when you read the verse, when my people, you know, who are called by my name will will humble themselves. And But this was a verse that was written that is a narrative of what actually happened. And this was a prayer of dedication for the temple that Solomon was making. And if you... That is not a prayer for the revival of the United States of America. But if you will keep reading in that chapter, there are some curses that are attached to the end of that prayer that Israel ended up getting, and they haven't even fully received all those curses yet because they God hasn't finished sorting out the nation of Israel. But nobody wants any of that for America. Right. So it's this kind of picking and choosing of, well, that verse really sounds great, and it looks good against the flowing um, amber waves of grain and, and <laughs> red, white, and blue of the video. Um, I think that's an example of uh, an unhealthy hermeneutic. And so now you have a group of people that are expectant of something to happen in the United States of America, and when it doesn't, well, preaching loses all its credibility. And... Um, you're not actually plugged into what's actually happening right now. You don't understand what God is actually doing right now. And so you're attributing to God things that are really world system, and you're not you're missing out on what God is actually doing. And so that's not any way to live the Christian life. But that's what I said before about bad hermeneutics insulates us from the power of, of God, the true power of Scripture. Um, you have everybody over here looking at what's happening over there. But that's not God. God's not doing that. God's doing this, and they're missing out on it because they're not plugged into what the true power is because they're not reading God's Word the right way. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I, so I, take, I, I appreciate that example. Uh, one of the things I like about that example is because we've heard that a lot. I don't hear it quite as much as I, I did in... in few years back but you still do hear it i always find it interesting when you go to daniel 9 you see dan daniel actually doing what he said in that prayer if they you know if they're cast out but they call the mind you know and who is he he's over in babylon and he's in a house and he's praying towards this place and he's is confessing the sins of his people which is people of israel uh, I always find out how he took that very literally about them because he was an Israelite. Yep. Um, I, I, so just to ask you to take this just a bit further then. Sure. So since, you're, since you brought up the issue of kind of what, shall we, what has become popular as Christian nationalism, you want to just throw in there maybe something that would be helpful for the believer to think about in terms of, well, how do we respond to, we look around and, you know, I'm, 
crazy to say I'm old enough to look back and go, I remember a simpler day in America that wasn't so crazy and insane. Right. And it seems kind of nuts now. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think there's a passage which talks about um, our communication with God um, in Timothy, where we are to um, intercede and to supplicate for kings and for those who are in authority. Um, and Paul tells us why, so that we can live that quiet and peaceable life. Um, and I think the, the the mentality in there is is literally above above the fray, above the hoi polloi, above the hustle and bustle. And um, if I understand my Bible correctly, and I believe I do, God is not going to come and reform this world system. He's going to build its kingdom, his kingdom on its ashes. And so if I am invested in reforming the world system and I am I'm in there and mixing it up and just trying to eliminate, you know, all the, the ills of, of society, I'm, I'm investing in something that God's going to destroy. Um, but again, if I'm interpreting my Bible correctly and I'm interceding so that God can choose out from the nations and those to be a part of the body, because I know what God's doing, because that's what the Bible tells me he's doing now. Okay, I, I, Now I'm living a life above the fray, and I'm putting God's eternal life on display so that others can see that, and then God can use that to draw those to, to build this body that he's building. So again, that's the kind of an understanding. He's not doing that. He's doing this. Well, what tells me that? The scriptures tell me that, and a, and a proper interpretation of scriptures tell me that. So if the pastor's not preaching that from the pulpit and the people don't know what God's doing, they're going to get distracted and they're going to miss out. But if he is telling them what God's doing, God wants them to participate in that. God wants them to be a part of it. And then they'll be empowered um, and with the right motivation, the things we talked about this weekend, yeah. that'll apply. Okay. Yeah. Do, you, do you have any examples or any ideas that fit into what Steve has been saying here. I think he crushed it. He I mean, crushed it. All right. He, he answered it all. Yeah. I was, one of the passages that I come to mind, I think we were talking about this last evening, the three of us, is uh, 1 John 2.15, where he says to not love the world or the things that are in the world. And we always think of just that, like, oh, you're loving new cars. You know, I had a friend here at church who used to call it new paint syndrome, you know. Paint on my car is not quite what it used to be. Uh, things like that. And, but some of that that he's talking about, I, I think, is not just the world system in terms of acquiring things, but also in terms of just trying to fix the world and trying to do God's word, way, God's job that he's given to us. I hate to put it that way. But the, the responsibilities God's given is trying to accomplish that by means of the world. That's things right. that are brag worthy and shiny, you know, because that's what the, catches the world's attention. And then at the end of that, he says, you know, rather than loving the world, he says, the one doing the will of the Father, which in the context of 1 John is loving other believers, he says, that one's at ease out into the age. And, and we are in election year here in America, and I'm already seeing Christians that are all just flustered about what's going to happen at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, there's better things than trying to be an Israeli, trying to claim an Israeli's promise that God made to them legitimately, right? Right. Okay. That's right on. Yeah. Anything either one of you want to add before we tie this off that you think would be helpful and encouraging? This is an unsolicited uh, advertisement, but I just uh, I happened to listen to your uh, this uh, podcast, you know, oh. uh, on, a, on a weekly basis or daily basis almost when I'm doing my my driving around town. And I just personally have benefited from it, and hopefully the folks out there have gotten a benefit. Uh, I'm sure they have. Um, from So I would just encourage the folks to keep on tuning in and uh, to this. Hit that like button. Hit that share yeah, button. Hit that. Yeah, I don't know. Right there. I'm not much of a self-promoter. but they, And I trust me, I did not ask them or even suggest that they do that. That takes me by so it's It's humbling that people say that. Subscribe. But. You know, all, all the things. Yeah. Like, share, subscribe, yeah. do it all. I, I think all of us, in, in, in uh, both of you mentioned this today in, your, in the Bible studies that we had here at church, um, that it is an amazing thing when you actually get out of the way and you have the right motivation to see what God does 
how he uses us. And I had a professor many years ago that said first time he ever preached was something that was totally unexpected that it was even coming. And he said when he was done, he says, the God said, if you'd let me use a poor broom like you to sweep this place clean, would you let me use you in other people's lives too? And that's kind of how God started him down that path. That's great. And uh, and that's I think that's what we are. We're kind of that old yeah. poor broom out on the back porch that uh, you almost think you could toss in the trash. But when we're willing to just let God do his work, get out of the way with his motivation yeah. and have his power, you know, then... And we stand amazed to go, wow, it's amazing that God gets anything done with me. But yeah, he's the God, divine God, all-powerful God of the universe. So anyway. That's great. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate sure. it. Uh, taking you. time to share this with people. And I hope that it's a hope it's an encouragement to you as much as it's been to me. I, I've been able to spend a weekend with these guys, getting to know them better and talking through things. And uh, you're, you're getting just a little snippet of some of this here. So and again, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank, thank you. Okay. Yeah, and as always... Sure. I encourage you to have a good day in the Lord, and thank you for joining us.